Can a work of art have imperfections? Are there flaws in a masterpiece? Every single person on earth was created with worth. But life can fracture how we see ourselves. Pain and failure can leave us cracked and feeling damaged. But what if those broken places are the chipping away of who we think we are? Revealing what's truly priceless underneath. Hello and welcome to all of our viewers tuning in from literally around the world. We have an exciting and powerful show just for you. We are going to be talking about a very important topic today. What is your value? Where does your value come from? And do mistakes or past hurts change our value? But before we dive into any and all of that, I wanna welcome our very special guest. He is the pastor of Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Todd! What's up, man? I love you, man. I love you so much. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. tonight is about to be a phenomenal night. It is. I am so grateful yep. for you. Yes, sir. I am so grateful for you. Wherever you're watching all over the world, we decided to partner with our friends at Daystar to just have something we're calling a night of value. Yeah. And I just want people to know Tim, the thing that we found out in God's word, the yep. thing that we found out through our relationship, the yep. thing that we found out being around people who encourage, that means put courage in, is that every one of us have value. Just many times we forget it. <laughs> many times we're not aware of what God sees and how he sees us. And sometimes we just need a reminder. For sure. We need a reminder that we are valuable more than the mistakes that have happened to us, more than the bad decisions we've made. Let's be honest. Yes, right. Some of us have made some bad yep. decisions. Yep. But tonight we're going to be hot, humble, open, and transparent. And we're going to talk about damage that is in our life and then what God can do with damage. When I think about the Word of God, there is not one person that is in the Bible that did not have some type of deficiency. Absolutely. Something missing. Yeah, for sure. Something that they didn't feel fully equipped. Absolutely. But God. Yes, right. God still used imperfect people, damaged people, people who had trauma in their family. Yep. People who had trauma in their own ideas and yep. thought process. And God said, perfect candidate right. for me to use my power to be strong in their weakness. And so tonight, if you've been feeling anything that has made you feel like maybe I don't have what it takes to do what God's called me to do. Or maybe you're sitting there and you're deciding, or, am I gonna keep going? Am I gonna press towards the mark that God has called me to do? Tonight, we just gonna keep adding value. For sure. You have literally got two of the greatest encouragers here tonight. <laughs> we're, gonna put it, we're gonna put this encouragement on Come the on. inside of all, everybody. This is yeah. what maybe you've been praying for and did not even know, is that you are somebody that is full of what God is ready to you. Yeah. And so even in this moment right now, I need you to do something by faith. I want you to say, I have value that has been given by God. Yes. Come on, I want you to say that right now. We're gonna start this night out in crazy faith. Let's Somebody go. say, I have value. I have value. That has been given by God. That has been given by God. And nothing I do, nothing I do can take away. That's good. My value. That's right. Tonight. I need you to call some people. I need you to I need you to tell them, you know what? If I've been looking to be encouraged, this is the spot we For need sure. to be right now because you may be damaged, but you are not destroyed. And my burden is to help the people of God. And even if you don't know God yet, you're in the right place. Yes. Because you can belong here before you believe. That's right. <laughs> if somebody sent you this, you can belong here before you behave. What we want to do is introduce you to the one that has put value in you and will be the one who continues to see the value in you for the rest of your life. Listen, this is going to be an incredible, incredible night. And we are so grateful that you chose to be with us. And so I'm going to ask everybody, 
buckle up. Buckle up! Like, get your mind right, get your heart right, because everything is about to change for you yeah. tonight based on the deposit that God has put in this man. Many people feel disqualified from being used by God because of the damage they've experienced in their life. Maybe you've dealt with abuse, like I have. Maybe you've experienced failure, like I have, like we have. No one sees value in you. And this is something Pastor Mike unpacks in his new book, Damaged But Not Destroyed. Take a look. We're all damaged. Under the name brands, the makeup, the degrees, the success, the titles, and even the credit, I found everybody still has cracks. Yours may have started when you were younger. And by not getting the attention you truly needed, you decided that you'll never be disregarded again. And now the comments and the likes are a place of validation that are hollow and still lack true fulfillment. Or maybe you spent your entire life hustling, grinding, and working towards a goal, and in one moment, everything changed. Now you're left searching for who you really are. Or maybe you stepped out and used all your faith to do something everybody thought was crazy. But now because of circumstances that were outside of your control, it looks like you missed the mark and you feel like a failure. See, most people think my damage started here. But in reality, my damage started right here. real fight is not just the enemy, it's the inner me. It may not have been your fault, but it is now your responsibility. And I've realized what's not transformed is transferred. I want to let you know that every lie, every layer, and every limit no longer has the power to define you. The valley you've lasted through is evidence that you will see victory. It might have caused you trauma, but now you're going to experience triumph. That area in your life may be a point of pain, but I believe it can become your platform. It's time to change the narrative of your future. You may be damaged, but I promise you you're not destroyed. The value is still in you. I'm just overwhelmed. I don't even know what to tell y'all. Like, this is <laughs> that intro to give context to what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Listen, you're my dear friend. I yeah. can talk to you about <laughs> anything at any time. Yes, sir. But seeing that just gives me another appreciation for the treasure that's on the inside of you mm. and the gift that you've been given to give all of us. Wow. What, what made you write this book? Well, I, number one, thank you. This is a night of value, so we're going to be handing out uh, uh, encouragement oh, all dude. night. We, we will trade already, it all night. <laughs> all night we're going to be <laughs> we, doing that. For sure. Um, but the truth of the matter is this answer is two answers. Um, the first thing is, you know, I take a sabbatical every summer, mm -hmm. and um, two summers ago, it was like the Holy Spirit was like, I'm going to tell you to do something that you're not going to understand until after you do it. Okay. And he said, I want you to write a book about your damage based off a series I did in um, 2017 called Damaged Goods. Yeah. And he said, I want you to do that. And I was like, ah, that does not seem good. Like, I don't, <laughs> nobody wants to hear about their damage. Nobody wants to hear about those things. Yeah. But I knew it was an instruction from the Holy Spirit. And um, I don't even know. I just feel led to tell somebody right now, there are some things that God's telling you to do right now mm. that have nothing to do with what you're seeing, mm -hmm. nothing to do with your season, but mm -hmm. it's about the next season you're going in. Yes. So 
I obeyed God. Yep. It was not about, does this seem like the best message? Yep. It was like, I know God told me to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And when um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. Start writing the book. And then we hit this hard season in our life mm. where all of the things that used to work to help me feel better, mm -hmm. the, all the mechanisms that used to be in place, mm -hmm. they were broken. Yeah, absolutely. And we begin to do therapy and theology. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know sometimes the church just says pray about it, but right. I do believe that I found out in this last season that we need to pray yep. and then we need to go to a practice. Absolutely. We need to have community and we need to go to counseling. That's exactly right. We need to worship, but we yep. need to do the hard work. For sure, absolutely. And as I begin to do that, it was like God was peeling back the layers that had been a part of my life since I was a young boy. Yeah. He was going back and repairing and healing the child yep. that was in me that was still showing up yeah. in a grown man. Absolutely. And God said, for the next season of purpose, I have to remove some weights yep. so that you can go to the altitude that you're supposed to go to. Absolutely. So there are people watching right now and, and, and you're saying, God, what is my next? And he said, maybe the next is not getting more, it's losing mm. something. Maybe the next thing is letting some things go so God can take you to the next place. And I believe this is healing season. Yeah, for sure. I believe this is a season where God wants to heal people. Yeah. And um, that's when this book changed from a book to a burden. All right, so we're literally reaching people around the world. And we want you all to tell us where you're watching from. Shout us out. Let us know where you're watching from all around the world. Check in. Do roll call. <laughs> I remember being in school, you have to say present. Here. When you were here. Here. Come you know on. what I mean? Is, is, is Texas here? Texas is better Oklahoma, be here. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma gotta be here. Oklahoma better be California, here. California. Absolutely. I heard, I heard we can go across the pond to yeah, London absolutely. And, and Africa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But in all of those places, no matter where you find yourself right now, God has given you extreme value. Yeah. And tonight, we want to allow this message, yeah. damaged but not dis destroyed, to turn from a message into a movement. Well, uh, one of the things that really excites me about this book is that um, you're tapping into a common denominator in humanity. Yes, sir. Even the roll call that we did with these states and all of these different countries and continents, there's one thing that we all have in common. Yep. Damage. Yeah. The, the, you, you, a little kid can't escape being three or four years old without a, a skin knee. Yeah, if they're riding a bike. Right, exactly, yeah. right? So, so, so what made you so readily available yeah. and present to want to give this message out? Yeah. Because most lead pastors don't talk about their damage. <laughs> They'll invite people so they can talk about others' damage, yeah. but very few lead pastors that I know talk about their damage. The truth of the matter is, Tim, is that this would be a book that if I was writing my own story, I would write when I was 70. Wow. But because, but because God's writing this story. Yep. He asked me to share real time yep. how he's helping me become who he's called me to be. Wow. So I don't have the luxury as I walk in my calling of saving it until a different season. Yeah. There is a generation out here that needs to know that God will keep you He'll help you, yeah. he'll walk with you, yeah, and he's okay yeah. with you being real about where you are. I say it like this, God doesn't bless who you pretend to be. Mm -hmm. He blesses who you really are. Absolutely. And I just believe there are so many people trying to put on a facade and act like they're not hurt. Act yeah. like the, yeah. the disappointment didn't take something yeah. from them. Yeah. Act like the business failing for the second time right. and they are okay. No, no, right. God is big enough to deal with your debt. Yeah, absolutely. And there are too many of us shouting when we should be sharing. Yes. Like we, we're shouting that God is good, but we should be sharing, but I am disappointed yeah, too. for sure. Because he's still gonna be good and yeah. you can still be disappointed. Absolutely. And when you bring your damage to God, yeah. you have never seen a miracle yeah. until somebody broken brings their pieces to God. Yeah, for and sure. And he creates a masterpiece. All right, so um, one of the things that I believe is revolutionary and transformative about the, the grace that God has given you is that you are always breaking barriers. Mm -hmm. And in breaking this barrier, you are shattering the image of the perfect pastor. There is no, no such thing. <laughs> the, in, unless Jesus comes back and is the only pastor <laughs> right. in Until the he comes world back to get his bride. To get, yeah. There is no yeah. such thing as a perfect pastor. Absolutely. And it's exhausting yep. and a bad example. Yeah. 
for people to think that that is what is supposed to be portrayed. Okay. And let's talk about the fact that it takes bravery mm. to show up broken. Yeah. Wow. Right? When the, the, the motto has been, I'm better. No. <laughs> and you should be trying to attain where I am. Yeah. And I can show you the way. It takes bravery to show up broken. The truth. And this is something I've seen you do over and over and over again. We, we've, we've said it. We've, we've traded these um, ideas behind closed doors. But we said we were always going to be hot. Yep. Humble, open, and transparent. Right. And I found out when I read my Bible that God is close to the brokenhearted. He is. The, the, the prideful he can't stand. Right, correct. But those who say, I'm broken. Yeah. I need, I'm trying to do better. Yeah. Like I, and I believe that has been a beautiful intersection of the grace of God mm -hmm. and my humanity and mistakes, mm -hmm. knowing that I can't do anything without him. Yeah, it's good. And what has happened is God has taken that and he said, yeah, I'll deal with that. Yep. You, 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 you give me your heart, I'll help you change your habits. I, I believe in progression, not perfection. That's right. So, so, so yeah, come on, Michael. Yeah, yeah. You still struggling with that? Just bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have, I have four beautiful kids. And yeah, the thing do. that I love <laughs> about my children right now is that when something breaks that they couldn't pay for, mm -hmm. they don't hide it from me. Mm. They bring it to me. Mm-hmm. Because they know that they can never pay for it mm -hmm. or repair it on their own. That's right. So That's they bring right. it to their father. Yeah, it's good, bro. Even though uh -huh. they feel bad. That's right. And they might feel ashamed. Yeah. Or they might be a little um, um, afraid of the reaction. Right. They know the only way this gets better is they bring it to their father. Full disclosure. I don't know what happened to the body of Christ. Mm. But many times when things break, when our relationships break, when our families aren't doing well, when our minds and our emotions are going crazy, yeah. we've started to hide. Yeah what we should bring to our Father. Yeah, it's good. And in this book, what I want to do is I want to help people know that it's okay. Yeah. You may be damaged. You are not destroyed. God can take your trauma yeah. and he can handle it and turn it into triumph. Yeah, it's great. This is the time that we bring all our hurts, all our bad habits, all the things that have not healed. It's good. All the things we tried to numb and medicate. Yeah, it's good. We bring them to our Father. Yeah. Because he's the only one that can do something beautiful with all of the pieces that we have. Well, I wanna commend you on um, being the type of person that has given all of us wow. the opportunity to go second. The bravery of going first makes it easy for those that go second, third, fourth, wow. fifth, sixth. And I believe hundreds of thousands of people through this book are gonna be brave enough to step forward with their damage wow. because you decided to go first. This is a night of encouragement for everybody else. This nah, ma'am, don't think you're going to escape. No, no, this is, <laughs> thank you for saying that. I, yeah. I really, I really, that is my prayer. Yeah. My prayer is that the vulnerability would turn into victory. Good. Like my vulnerability would turn into somebody else's victory. That's right. And um, that somebody would be able to really understand that no matter what's happened to them, no matter what they've done to themselves. Yeah. No matter where they find themselves, if you're in a mansion right now or you're in a 500 square foot apartment, I know that God has put mm. something on the inside of you mm -hmm. that is worth more than the situation you may be facing right now. And God can take all of your damage and he can't just use it. He'll use it to turn your destiny into reality. Yeah. You may be damaged, but you, yes, you right there watching me right now, you may be damaged, but you are not Destroy. I think that's one of the things that I feel is profound about this particular book and its title is that it's missing the verbiage that people would want to be excited about, right? Yes, sir. We're talking about damage and destroy, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But, but, but that, what you, what you are filling in on, upon the pages is an invitation to see how clearly your destiny can be. Come on, man. That's the beauty of understanding your damage and understanding you're not destroyed. Yes, sir. Is that you do have a destiny and you can help them get the roadmap And the victory. trauma, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the trauma and the drama, it can turn into triumph. So listen, um, <laughs> uh, one of the best ways to find healing is to encounter the presence of God, yes, something sir. that we cherish. Yes. We're worshipers. Yes, sir. 
uh, and to give God space to work in our hearts. So I want to encourage you to do that right now as the Transformation Worship Team sings, Thy Kingdom Come. Hey, family, we are Transformation Worship. We just stopped by to let you know that the value is still inside of you, and we want the kingdom of God to invade earth. If you believe that today, I dare you to make some noise with the voice of triumph. We worship you, Jesus. Give us this day what we need to sustain. All of the earth shouts aloud to proclaim. There's no other name forever reign. Thy kingdom come. Yeah. Rest on his praise. Give us this day what we need to sustain. All of the earth shouts aloud to proclaim. There's no other name forever reign. This day what we need to sustain All of the earth shouts aloud to proclaim There's no other name Forever in that kingdom come Give us this day what we need to sustain If you believe that, 
make some noise right where you are. Lord, we want your kingdom to rest on us. Fall on us like never before. Hallelujah. That's the truth that we all want God's kingdom to come. And one of the things that I found out in this last season is part of God's kingdom coming is us actually walking in the fullness of our healing. And that means we have to deal with some of our damage. And maybe to move forward, we got to go back and give some things to God so that he can move us into the direction of our destiny. If you're just joining us, I want to say thank you for being with us because tonight, this is a night of value. And we are talking about my brand new book, Damage But Not Destroyed, where I share some of my testimony. Not, not just some of it, I share a lot of my testimony. If you want to really know about me, you can find out in this book and how God has taken all of the broken places of my life and he's changed me from the inside out so that I could be a blessing. I want you to realize that is God's MO, broken to blessing. Not just blessing you, but he wants you to be a blessing to others. And we're going to talk more about the book, but right now I want to talk to some of you. And I know there are thousands of you watching all over the world. So please, in the chat, if you're watching online or if you are joining us and you're on social media, tell us where you're watching from. But I need to talk to somebody right now who's out there and who's been impacted by this message. And, and so joining us right now on Skype is Julianne Rodriguez. Julianne, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Pastor Mike. How are you? I'm good, sister. How you doing? I'm doing amazing. Well, I just want to say thank you for being here tonight. Um, we are adding value to people, and you actually added value to me a couple of nights ago when I met you at the Barnes & Nobles in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, there was a line of people that came out in the rain. It just, like, literally started storming out of nowhere, and we started talking and you let me know that you had bought 10 books. Now, you are one person, and you do not need 10 books, but you bought 10 books with the intention of giving them away. Just a quick question. Why do you feel like this message is so important that you wanted to share it? And if we have time, could you tell us of a moment that you felt like you were damaged, but God showed you you were not destroyed, and he moved you into your destiny? Okay, so... Um... I went through a traumatic experience when I was 19. My mom actually got diagnosed with cancer. Um, so I was trying to figure out where I wanted to be in life, what college I was going to. And then I was hit with something that just turned my world upside down. For three and a half years, I was one of her main caregivers. And I went to a school locally. I was not really um, addressing the trauma that was actually happening and unfolding right before my eyes. And three and a half years later, she passed away. So when I was 23, I was upset. I was grieving. I was mad. I was going through so many emotions I didn't want to address. And I was always taught a pattern of to cover it up, to smile, to, to just get through it, to pray harder. Yeah. But it wasn't working for me. So I actually turned away from God. I started to piece together my own piece and trying to get through life and for accolades, for college degrees. And then I found TC. God literally found me through Pastor Charles' sermon. And I was on the floor in my kitchen crying because I never heard a pastor speak so transparently, so vulnerably about that he was curled up under his desk. And I felt the shame and condemnation just fall off my shoulders. And I had a true encounter with God. At that moment, I gave my life to Christ. And ever since then, God has been moving in my life. Three and a half years later, I'm in therapy. I have resources like The Basement, like um, The Peace of Mind by Tim Ross. You step on my toes every single Sunday during sermons, but it's all propelled me toward a healing process. So literally, I felt like God spoke to me. My word of the year was freedom, not just for me, but for those around me. So I watched God work from January to now, like literally seeing all the sermons line up, um, the community that I have now, the safe places I have to cry on somebody's couch. Literally, I've cried on this couch like five times and just people hold me tangibly. But I know that's Jesus' love pouring out in a tangible way to uh, fast forward to your book, your book being released. I already pre-ordered my copy, but. I felt like Holy Spirit that morning, I woke up and was like, God was like, give five away. So I immediately posted on my Instagram because this year I decided I will be found in obedience. Whatever God says, I don't have to realize the impact it's making. I just know that God told me to do this and he's handling the rest. So I posted on my Instagram within three hours, people already claimed the book. And then a couple people more reached out and 
I was like, man, I was at Target getting the books because, you know, they only had two physical copies. Yeah. And then you came back in the rain that night. Yeah, and then uh, they only had two physical... Mm -hmm. And then and then you bought some more books. Yes, so those are the last two remaining that I needed. So getting them signed by you was just to add a bonus, like cherry on the top by God. So it was definitely just spirit led. I was going to be found in obedience and just giving a resource and then letting God do the rest. Well, I want to just say, number one, this is something to be celebrated. The transformation that is happening in your life the obedient, I mean, girl, you preaching when you said, I'm going to be found obedient. Like, if you find me, you're going to find me doing what God told me to do. I just want to say thank you. And I just want to let you know that your generosity to those people, whoever you sold the seeds into, it's coming back to you in a huge measure. And I'm not just saying some church language right now. You know, people be like, it's coming back to you and it's, it's going to be in another level. I'm talking about tangibly because when I heard your story, I said, I got to do something. Me and my family got to do something because this young lady felt that God woke her up to sow. So what I want to let you know is that I have gotten with the team and we are sending you an entire box. I'm going to pull it up right now of damage but not destroyed books. So you can go out everywhere and you can give them to whoever you want to. I'm sending you an yeah. unreleased hoodie that says God blesses who you really are, not who you pretend to be. And then I said, that's all about everybody else. This woman has been doing healing. She has been trying to go on a journey of finding herself. And so I want to send you on a thousand dollar staycation somewhere in the city so you can spend time with God, spend time with yourself, spend time doing whatever God tells you. You can watch a movie. I don't care. But I just want you to know that your seed of generosity did not go unnoticed. And God allowed me, he spoke, Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to bless this young lady as a confirmation that the value is still in you. You may be damaged, but you are not destroyed. I love you. I am grateful for you. And this package is on the way to you right now. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Oh, I love I'm you honored. so much. And I'm believing <laughs> for everybody that this would be a seed that is going to be so rich in you. Did you hear what she said? God started transforming her life and she knew she couldn't just keep it for herself. She had to share it with other people. I'm telling you the message that is in this book, Damaged But Not Destroyed, is not just about you. It's about everybody that's around you. It's about helping the people who you love. And I want to let you know that the person I love on this earth more than anybody else, I got to move the box. Just join me on the couch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my wife is here. Pastor Natalie is, is just, come on, I'm about to scoot closer. To you. Hold on now. I'm damaged, <laughs> but I am not destroyed. Oh my God. I'm telling you right now, babe, thank you for being here with I'm me. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, girl, don't you start. We will ruin this whole hour of power. No. Because the I one person who has encouraged me more than anybody is you. And you have seen me at my worst, and you have seen me on mountaintops, and this you've been true. right there with me the entire time. Um, people may not know our, our full story, so let me just tell you, not the full story, but this has been um, the love of my life since I was 15 years old. I was 14. You were 14, I was 15. We wrote it all in a book called Relationship Goals, and um, you might need to check that out, but God has sustained Bella, us. Our girls can't date till our, they're like, Married. Yeah, <laughs> Bella, all of our girls cannot <laughs> date until they married. It's, it is said right here. Those are our beautiful children. Um, Bella, and that's MJ, oh, and that's Ava, and yeah. that's Gia, and that's us. And we are grateful um, for what God has done in our life. But Nat, yeah. okay, I wanted, I wanted to be like completely transparent on mm -hmm. this live television show. Yes. And there's one person I've never been able to hide from, and that's God and you. Yeah, as it should be. As it should I be. I see it all. And so, um, 
I just want you to talk about, like, how has it been for you mm -hmm. watching me write this book, go through the process? I mean, you used to do my homework in high school because I was going to fail English class, and you just yeah. would come and actually help me. It's the truth. Who it's a have... miracle. You have three books. That is what? a miracle. OK, uh, I'll he take that as a compliment. did and... not do homework, <laughs> that... and he has three books. Okay. What? Okay, I'm we, proud of you. we want to talk about proud crazy you. faith. Okay, I'm sandwiching. <laughs> I'm sandwiching that. So, okay, this is a night of adding value. Yes. Okay, yes. so do Be not discourage. Encouraged. Me. No. <laughs> no, it it truly is a miracle that I'm sitting here. Yeah. Um, a third book, but you've watched me be in yes. the trenches of like, should yes. I share this? Should I not? Yes. Like can... every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. Every, every single week. So I don't know if anyone. I cannot imagine every single week trying to hype myself up to get the bravery to be as authentic as you are mm. on the platform. And I think I actually, I know that's why God has blessed our ministry like they have. And you get, I mean, like Julianne, that was just- That was beautiful. Wasn't I mean, that an amazing that's, story? That's crazy that that's real. But there's people out here that will come in the rain and buy other copies of this book to give out just because they know that God connected them to this ministry. And I know, like behind closed doors, in front of um, people watching, people not watching, like how much this platform means to you, how sacred it is, how you consider everything, everything that you do and everything that you don't do, you consider it. And you're, you're thinking about the lost person in the room that doesn't even know anything about God or Christendom or anything. And you're thinking about your mom, who was the safe saint of the <laughs> world, sees Shout the saint. Shout out to Mama B. Yeah, I love and you. everyone in between, and how you're trying to like be authentic to be able to to reach different levels of yeah. people. And so, yeah, I've seen it, and um, you have people around you to help encourage you. Yeah to help reel you back sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh God, he's really sharing that. Okay, it's out there. <laughs> okay. We know to be aware that like, if you are, we are around you, you're probably gonna get you're used on stage. You're probably gonna get used. <laughs> because I believe that the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb, yeah. but the words of our own testimony. Yeah. And I just feel like the church has lost the art of actually sharing their real testimony. We give the How edited- How am I not scared? How am I not scared? To do that. I mean, doesn't it like, do you think real time when it's happening, like I'm about to share this and this may not go over well, but. I think, I think that. I do you think, think in the moment when it happens? Yes, but I always, I get scared to share because I know everybody is not thinking of the intent of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But then I get more scared of the version of me needing somebody to tell me the truth. Mm. Like, when I was 15 and 16 and 17 and 23 and 27 and 36 and now 37, I needed somebody to tell me the truth yeah. and not sugarcoat it and tell me why Jesus was the answer. Yeah. And a lot of time they would say stuff like, you know, we know everybody's struggling. Yeah. With what? Like, I want to know yeah. with what? Like, yeah. or, you know, you, you used to go to youth camp and people would get up to pray and be like, I have an unspoken. Yeah. What in the world yeah. is an unspoken? Yeah. Like, I need, I need to speak it. I need to share it. I and love that you share real life examples, not necessarily if you've done them. Oh my gosh, people. <laughs> he will give examples that maybe he has not done, but he's trying to, you will try to connect with someone that may be doing it and you say it, like you just said, like you're yeah. struggling. You'll yeah. say what it really is. Yeah. So the person in the stage can feel like, okay, yeah, he said it, that's what I'm dealing with and they can work from there. My thing is how I see how you do that and you don't allow what God has done to the level it is on. You don't, you don't allow that to, uh, restrain you, like no, keep I, you from <laughs> going full out. I told somebody this the other day. Most people when God uses it. it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Most people when God does something in their life, they try to protect it. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do is get as many people to Jesus as possible. If I lose everything in that attempt, it's okay because I did it for the cause of Christ. Hmm. And I just believe that losing is part of what God wants us to do. The Bible says stuff that we don't really talk about like 
killing our flesh and <laughs> dying daily and like all of those different things. I think, Natalie, what's helped me be able to do this is that we've really embraced as a couple the philosophy of theology and therapy. My God. We have not just said, let's just pray about it. We have said, let's pray about it. And now we need to go see a practice. Yeah. You Look. talk about how, you know, trauma can come from success. Yeah, like... And how that's impacted our family. It's impacted our family. Nobody impact, talks about that. It's impacted me. It's impacted us. Yes. I mean, the things that we have gone through have changed us. And the reason we're sharing this, and I, I want you to see me and Natalie up here doing this, I believe more couples, more, more people who are in ministry, more people that are um, standing on any type of platform, whether you're the principal of your school or you're the head of the PTA or you're the captain of your football team, I need you to know that people would always, I heard my friend Craig Rochelle say this, people would always rather follow somebody that's real than yeah. somebody who's always right. And I think in church, a lot of times we, we, we just want to be right. Like we want to be right. God is right. Yeah. Jesus is right. And through his right, he's made us righteous. Yeah. But that means we also have to deal with living in a fallen world. Yeah. And that means sometimes we get it wrong. And I just think that until we can actually get it wrong and bring that damage to God, we never get to move into our full destiny. And yeah. thank you, since this is a night of value. I love you. I, uh, don't I'm you, so proud girl, of you. don't you start up in here because we will turn this whole thing <laughs> around and I will be so on the floor crying. But I just want to let you know, like, thank you for allowing me to become the man of God I am. Mm -hmm. Most people want a finished product, but the best things are made. They don't just appear. Mm -hmm. Thank you for allowing God to make me and never leaving me in the process. You Where we are today, me. what'd you say? You stuck with me. I'm stuck with you. You are. And we kind of matching too. It kind of <laughs> looked like a, a little Hershey chocolate <laughs> fest up Reese's here right now. Uh, uh, I just want to say thank you publicly. You know how I feel about you, but at the moments that I felt my lowest, it was your words, your touch, your reminders that let me know I still had value. Mm. And so today, I just want to, on this platform, just let you know that I am who I am because you have continued to tell me who I am in Christ. And uh, you're the best partner I, I could ever ask the Lord for. Thank you for being my wife, my best friend, my girlfriend, my baby mama. Oh my my, okay, I'm about to go down the oh list. Thank gosh. you. I love you so much. I love you too. Thank oh. you for always uh, listening to me and to others, people with genuine um, things that maybe they want to say to you or to our congregation in the ministry. You listen to people, but most importantly, you listen to God. And I know that you are consistent with taking things to the Lord. Yeah. You will take it, whatever it is. So when life comes with stuff like it has yeah. in ours yeah. and in yours, you know, outside of me and with us together, um, I know like you consider God above all else and you'll take it to him. Yeah. And you will, you will take it to him and you will take it to people that um, walk with you. Yeah. And you'll, you will consider, no, you don't, you don't ever shut anything out and just take it for what it is, All and right. I love you for that. All right. All right. <laughs> this is a night of value, and I'm, my love tank is full right now. Starting with Tim, now my wife. <laughs> this is about y'all, and but somehow. I, I'm proud of the book. I'm proud of you. I'm <sighs> proud of what you put into this book, and um, I All know right. it wasn't easy. It and was not easy. But yeah, vulnerability is hard. Yeah. If, especially for you. You went through years where vulnerability was so hard. Was rough. But it has now created victory. Yeah. And you mentioned in there, um, we've been through some hard things. Yes, we have. <laughs> hey, one of the hardest things that we've ever been through was when we, um, we faced the diagnosis of our only son, MJ, yeah. having autism. And... Um, there may be some people out here who are facing really hard things right now. And I want you to remember that God has not abandoned you. He's not punishing you. These are all lies from the enemy. Yeah. God is right there and he wants to walk with you through the situation. Yeah. And we had to learn that as we um, navigated through MJ's story. So we want to just show you a little piece 
of, of what we've been through and what God has done to let us know that we may have been damaged, but we are not destroyed. Check this out. So basically, um, MJ is our second child. He was born in two, October 26, 2015. And um, he was progressing normally. Everything was moving great. And about a year and a half, my wife said to me, she was like, Mike, MJ's not looking at me anymore. Like, he's not looking at me. And I was like, what are you talking about? No, that's, he's fine. Like, it's just, he's developing, like, he's fine. And slowly but surely, I started noticing it. Like, he wasn't looking, he wasn't making eye contact. He stopped eating um, different types of food. He only wanted one thing. We went to a state appointed, like, person that checks children's development. And she goes through all these tests and she says, you guys don't say anything. I'm just gonna talk to MJ. He's almost two now and he's not paying attention. He's not looking at her. He's not doing some of the things. And she said, yep, um, I believe he has autism. Um, I, I think he's on the spectrum. And she was like, and then she just proceeds to tell us all the things that he'll never do. Like she didn't, no hope, just like, he's not gonna talk. He's not gonna do this. He's not gonna do this. And I mean, I watched it literally crush my wife. God has done all of these amazing miracles and we got the building and we paid it off in five months and our church is exploding. But behind the scenes, the backside of the blessing was that we were dealing with something really, really hard in our home. I was crushed thinking about my son never being able to play catch with me. I was devastated, not knowing if he would ever make a friend. I was enraged, thinking after all the people that I helped, God, why didn't you help me? And even though his body was getting bigger, his mind and his ability to connect was still at two years old. My wife began to slip into a depression. I began to try to work harder, be more, but nothing could seem to fill the void, the emptiness, the cavern that had formed in me and Natalie's heart. It really broke me and it made me have to go and deal with myself. Me and Natalie started intensive counseling when I say intensive counseling, I'm talking about we would sit with our counselor for five hours every day and process all kinds of stuff. What started out as MJ really came back to us. And we begin to have to deal with the trauma of our past, the pain of our present, and the uncertainty of our future. I remember my son now is saying Bible scriptures. He's reminding us in moments of doubt that anything is possible for the ones who believe. He's a musician, he loves God, he loves his sisters. He calls them by name. When he speaks the scriptures that he learns, it reminds me that God is faithful. No matter what you're going through, and even if the story has not finished yet, because MJ's story is not finished, I want you to know no matter how damaged you are, God is sustaining you. October 26, 2015, the best day of my life. He was born perfect. Wow. That was too much. <laughs> oh, God.
Um, <sighs> I want you to know that God mm. is so good. Oh, he's so good that he allows you to sometimes experience things that are very hard so that you can realize how strong, how awesome, and how loving he really is. The Bible tells us in this world we will have trouble. So if you're trying to escape it, good luck. <laughs> Me and Natalie weren't able to give enough, pray enough, help enough people for real life to not hit our doorstep. But it's not about what happens to you. It's about who you have with you when it happens to you. And my Bible says that God will never leave you or forsake you. As we're in the middle of this moment right now, and as I was in the middle of that moment, confused out of my mind, I sat down at the piano and I began to pin these words that the Holy Spirit gave me. You sustain, you sustain in the middle of it all. You remain the same. Through the rain, you still reign. You sustain. I knew God as a healer. I knew God as a way maker, a God that would do the breakthrough. But God let me know. He said, I'm going to introduce another side of myself to you. You're going to know me as a sustainer. And I wanted the situation to change. And God said, this one's going to take a little longer than you expect, but I'll be with you and I'll keep you the entire time. I don't know what you're facing right now. Some people just want the situation to go away. But I came to tell you, you may be damaged, but you are not destroyed. You may be experiencing trauma, but at some point, it's going to turn into triumph. Why? Because he sustains. And if you're in that moment right now, I want you to let the words of this song, that transformation worship is going to sing. I want them to minister to you wherever you are right now. This is transformation worship singing sustain. We believe we serve a God who will sustain us through each and every season. Right now, no matter what you're going through, I want to remind you that there's value still inside of you, and God will sustain you. Come on, just join us in worship.
sustaining us, God. Thank you. I want you to know that this is what our God does. He sustains. No matter where you find yourself right now, I think tonight was a night to remind you that your damage does not have to define you. That everything that has happened put in the hands of a master can change everything. I want to end the night by telling you a story. I was raised with four brothers, so there's Todd, five Todd boys. And my parents have been in full-time ministry for almost their entire life, as long as I can remember. And many times that meant that we needed to save a little money to make things happen. And I remember my mom going to Warehouse Market, a local grocery store, and she would go to the dented and damaged aisle. Now, I know everybody doesn't know anything about that because of Uber and all the different things where we get our food, but back then we had to eat what was cooked. And she would go to these places and go to this aisle that had been discounted and labels had been ripped off and cans had been dented and there were scratches and rips on these boxes. And she would take them because she was a master chef and she would take them home and put a little seasoning on it and even put a little fire on it and it would turn into the best meal. I believe that this is the season where God is taking people who have been damaged, scratched, the label has been torn off of you. And he's saying, would you please place your life in my hands? The hands of somebody that knows how to make something beautiful. And even God will put a little fire on you to refine you. But he turns what was once discounted into something that is gourmet. I believe that this is the healing season that God is bringing all of us into. So right now, if you're in a place where you felt damaged, like your worth has been gone, I want you to call the number that is on the screen. We have people that are ready to pray for you right now. You need encouragement and this is a night of value and the best way to get value is by linking up with another believer and believing God to turn your trauma into triumph. I'm gonna call my mentor and my brother back up and we're gonna pray for you right now. And I don't care what you've been in, what's been going on in your life tonight, God, we believe by the power of the Holy Spirit is visiting you right where you are. There is nothing you've done that separates you. There is nothing that can take away what God has placed on the inside of you. Your container may be damaged. The covering may be jacked up. But the content, who God created you to be, it's still good. Today, I want you to know that the value is still in you. So by the amazing power of prayer, we want you to call in and we're going to pray for you right now. Would you just stretch your faith with us mm -hmm. to believe that people who have been feeling like nothing are about to come into another level of knowing who Christ says they are yes. and who they've been created to be. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this night of value tonight. Yes, Me thank and you, Tim Jesus. and the thousands of people that are watching right yes, now, God. we are bringing our damage to yes, you. God. Thank you, Lord. Every lie, every mistake, every bit of pain, all the abuse, Father God, right now, we are coming to the only one that knows what to do with Yes, it. Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. God, today I am you, asking Lord. that you would meet your children yes. at the point of their pain. Thank you, God. And you would bring them into another level of their purpose. Yes, Holy Lord. Spirit, yes, Lord. you are the one that leads and guides us into all truth. So right now, from Australia to Africa, yes. Father God, from Tulsa to Dallas, yes. Father God, from California to New York, would you be the one to give us the next step we need to take? Yes, God. As you are a God that is committed to our progression, not our perfection. Perfection. Yes, Lord. Tonight, God, we're bringing everything to you. Mm. And Father, because of what Jesus has done and our acceptance by faith of that, tonight our value is secure. Yes, God. Thank you, God, that we are your masterpiece. Yes, Lord. That's what you say. Yes, God. And God, we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because we may be damaged, but we are not destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.